What's up? Hello? Welcome to Rabbit Hunting here on the SoRare Data YouTube channel. I am Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdinho on SoRare. Today, what game week am I even doing? Game week 355. I'll be honest, I was completely thrown off by a tweet that I got this week, this week, today, like there were a couple of them, from Wedge Game, who I know kind of from DFS. And the it changed everything I wanted to do today, which is really throwing me off. First off, Mike Baston, you were first. Seems like you're the only one here, actually. So thanks. Uh, and yeah, it, you you actually DM me last, what was that, last weekend? Yeah, you were you had your own rabbit hunting, except you knew yours right away. That's always kind of the worst one where you know, like, I knew exactly what I needed to do to win something. I'll say for the few very uh, Yowza's, oh, the lur lurkers are here. Yeah. So if any, any lurkers here, please uh, like the, the video. If you guys could also let me know, there's nothing I can do about this, but my neighbor is cutting wood outside, chopping wood, excuse me. And every so often I hear it. And I don't know if you guys hear it. And I don't know if it's like kind of a comforting background noise just to hear wood being chopped or if it's really annoying. But I don't know how to stop. I'm not going to go out there and tell him to stop. So. We'll have to power through that. But I want to bring up um, a few things. I guess I'll go through. I actually don't even know if I want to go through my lineups. I'll show them. I'll show like how my results were quickly because they weren't great. And so not that you guys come here for great results. You come here for great could have been results. And so I can do that quickly uh, just because. Like I said, it's kind of what we what we do here. And let's see here. So my results from last week, I want a tier five super rare, two tier five limiteds. And unfortunately for me, so rare fixed the tiers. So these were true tier fives. And then I believe for the first time since I started really entering it, I didn't get the threshold in cap 240 super rare, which is honestly like one of the things that I prioritize every week. And that was a little disappointing. And I missed it in limited also. I don't even remember why I missed these. Like this one was just my boy, Michael Doolin. Shout out to looking up with Laird. It was a tremendous disappointment. New York City FC somehow giving up two goals to DC United at home. It's, it's all pretty ugly. And so uh, Alex is saying, I got the threshold and cap 240 by 0. 0.6. Way to be. Way to be. Congrats on the ETH. I hope you spent it well instead of just ripping it right out of the uh, right of, out of the platform. I did hit 240 thanks to Luis Arudi being the goat that he is and everyone else really disappointing. It's I, I was not expecting DC United to give New York City FC such a hard time, but somehow I, they, New York City also scored three goals. Keaton Parks, not part of any of them, which... He's not a big decisive guy anyway, but Zeller Ion, just terrible. And then Kevin McAllister, is this a straight 60? Yeah, it is. Straight 60, no decisive. And that got us there. And then just a whole lot of average scores. I mean, not literally average, below average for these guys since they didn't even reach 240. But it was ugly. And honestly, like that's what ruined my game week is not hitting the thresholds because my lineups just weren't that great overall. I did have a few. So this is this is lineup, Cap 220. So now I've, I've won a reward in Cap 220 Super Rare in back-to-back -back weekends. And I won Nuno Tavares two weekends ago. And he had an L15 of 41, I think. And so fit really well in here. And uh, Oswaldo Alanis and Arnie Meyer ha had really good uh, pick score ratings. I think they were both double A. So I was like, all right, here we go. And the Camilo Vargas, like huge game, I think was pretty unexpected. Even like clean sheets, I, I've gotten to the point where I, I literally cannot like go into a game week and being like, well, if Atlas keeps a clean sheet, because they just never do, but they did. And so if you remember from two weeks ago, I had four green scores and then Jao Felix had an error led to goal, which killed like a good in fact i think i came up short 
no, no, I didn't come up. I, I did win a reward because everyone else had a decisive. It was a five decisive lineup, but unfortunately only four positive ones. But it won me this Tavares card and I put it right in. And he continued the streak of four green scores and one orange one. And so I won a true tier five. I don't even remember who it was. Um, it was actually someone who looked very similarly in terms of scores to Tavares, like a lot of up and down. Yeah, Igor Silva from Lorient. I don't know anything about this guy. Obviously, he was out for a long time. I did as much research as I was willing to do, which was putting a question of, does anyone know about this guy in a Discord I'm in? And nobody responded, and I decided to give up. And then he got a red card. But I didn't play. This was the red. So like I won him. I didn't get him in time for a game week. And he, now he's suspended. Which is a lot of fun. But kind of similarly to, to Tavares, like 30 AA is a lot for a right back. And so not, I'm not expecting big scores all the time. But it's not, it's not that bad. I said that though about Tavares too, and obviously that killed the lineup. Tavares was on was supposed to have a good game because he went bad or he didn't play. Good, bad, good, bad, and then the next one should be good. And it wasn't. And I feel like nobody told him. And and now I don't know if this means I'll get two good games or if he'll never have a good game again. And so these are the things that you have to think about when it comes to so rare of what happens. So Alex was saying I had too many DNPs and uh, Spurtsy and conceding a penalty. That's a killer. Would have had some nice ETH and a tier one and all star. It happens. It happens. Hey, oh, indeed, indeed. So I'll go quickly through my players because I guess that's just what we do. I didn't even have that. Actually, these are all, there are three rares right in a row. So maybe we are, but I do want to show. Uh, this this uh, tweet from Wedge Game that is basically like how, basically explaining that nobody does real lineup reviews, and it's a very popular DFS thing to do. My old RotoWire soccer partner Jordan Cooper does them for uh, over on Roto Grinders, mostly for basketball, and he does it for baseball. And he looks at every single day during the week, he'll look at the winning lineups and all of the different combinations that people use. And a lot of the, the uh, max, max entry people who do 150 lineups and how they decided to distribute all of their entries. And I think there's a lot to learn in that type of content for DFS. And I wrote back to Wedge Game here that I, I don't think it applies as much to to so rare, and I'm going to explain a little bit why I think that's the case. Because the maybe I'll I'll just go into it now. There are no rules here, right? So I'll just go into why I think this is the case. And this is actually why I'm going to explain why it it why I don't do it, and why I'm just not sure it's it's all that helpful, to be honest. So the idea is basically every game week you look back at the lineups that won and see if you can learn anything from it. And the, the, the reason why you can do this fairly easily with DFS, and that's daily fantasy sports for anyone who doesn't understand that. And it's usually DraftKings and FanDuel. There are a few others, but any serious DFS player plays those two sites. So the idea is you look back, you see the lineup that won and you, you kind of review of like, why does this, why does this lineup make sense? Does it make sense? Did they just completely luck box a, a lineup that should not win? And DFS is all about probabilities that you want to build lineups that have the biggest return for their biggest risk return. And at least in, in tournaments and in cash games, you kind of want the most optimal lineups, the one that will win more often because you're, you're supposed to play those more often. And so if you win 60% of the time, that that's really good. And for tournaments, like these big tournaments, you pretty much just need to win like once. And you're, that's usually enough for most people 
you know, if they're spending $3 and turning that into 10,000 or $20 into 100,000, it, it works. It's also very, very hard. But the, the biggest difference when it comes to DFS is that everyone has the same player pool. And you can make the argument that we all have the same player pool in so rare because you can buy car, any card you want. There, there is a price for every card. And I'm going to ignore uniques and... and I, I get Ignoring super rares probably doesn't... It, it's not the same as uniques, but even for limiteds and rares, theoretically, you could buy the lineup that wins every week. The problem is that we we all go in to a game week with different players. And so realistically, we're not going into every game week thinking, which five players do I have to buy this week that will win? And so that's kind of how DFS works. It's what are the best, I mean, it depends on sport, five, seven, eight best players for this, for today that will help me win. And when you can review those lineups, you can say, okay, well, you know, this guy stacked his goalie and and defenders and he got the set piece taker with the forward and there was a corner and they, you know, those two linked up and that's like somewhat positive correlation. And then you can play the attacking left back on the team that's losing because they're going to be pushing ahead towards the end of the game and lumping in crosses, which are really big in DraftKings. And so you just kind of look at stuff like that. And so Mike is, so yes, DFS is like a poker tournament. Like, absolutely. There is a significantly more uh, crossover between the DFS community and the poker community than so rare in DFS and so rare in poker, despite what everybody wants to think about it. That the game theories that apply in DFS and poker don't, oh, don't apply as easily to so rare. At least on, on the, certainly not on the limited rare and super rare level. And even on the unique, it doesn't because you can't all have the same player. I mean, we, we just saw the Bruno Fernandez uh, unique auction go. Now two people have a Bruno unique, but it's only two. And so you can think about, you know, oh, is this guy? And, and some of the guys who do play those levels, we've spoken to on previous shows or I've spoken to kind of, I guess privately, but like they look at what the other whales are playing and it's like, oh, he always plays his messy unique in champ Europe. So if I have one, then I can play it somewhere else. And I know that it, it won't correlate, right? I mean, it won't uh, compete with that one. And there are some way, like, um, I remember uh, YNWA made a comment that sometimes he's willing to buy a second unique and never train it. And so if he ever sells it, it's so far behind XP wise than the, the unique that he has. And that's just like, that's game theory that like, doesn't nobody else thinks about, I mean, not that nobody, no other whales, but like when you're on the super rare, rare and limited level, you don't think about that stuff because there's always another card available and jump sheet, You cannot double down yet on so rare. Although there are people asking for multi-entry and thresholds. I'm not going to get into that. And I'm not even sure I disagree with it, but it's there. So anyway, so I think the, I think one of the tools that we have at SoRare Data is both really helpful and it's not hurtful, but it, but it gives people the, the idea that what they're doing is right when it's not something that you can necessarily be right about. And it's the concept tool, which I use on this show to like show, it, it's easy for me to use it because I can see like where my guys were. But I think the, the reason why a lot of people wanted this tool was that they were like, I want to buy these five cards and I want to see if they've ever done, if they've ever won something. And in Sorare, just because a lineup won something one week doesn't mean it's a winning lineup. And there was a line, I haven't finished listening to it. In fact, I'm only like 20 minutes into this week, so far so rare with Quinny. And Quinny said something, and I actually, full disclosure, I invited Quinny to come on to this show. 
and I, I did it like 10 minutes before it started. And naturally he was busy because why would you think that I would just come calling 10 minutes before the start? But one of the things he said was, it was essentially what everything that happens in so rare, like is an individual event. And so if you had five cards that won a podium 12 game weeks ago, meaning, or you were going to put them in here and they won the podium 12 weeks ago, there's nothing on there and nothing about that that tells you it's going to happen again. And I think it it's helpful to see like, okay, th these guys usually score in this range. And, and I do think that looking at historical scores will helps you get an idea of like an expectation for the future. I, I do think that's helpful. I don't think it's an indication, but it's helpful. And so Jerm saying, I find concept builder easier to scout than player rankings. I don't disagree with you. I, I use both, uh, but I'm also kind of at a point where I'm not looking for like most of my so rare time is spent not trying to figure out new players to get, but how to afford the players I want to get. And, and so the, so that's the problem. So jump shoot, it's funny that you bring this up. I think this could be great for MLB. Those guys are pretty consistent in numbers. The problem is they're not. So when you look at something, you know, you build your lineup with Mike Trout and, and other guys, and it's a week that Trout, or it's a game week that Trout just didn't get a hit because it happens or he, or he had one hit. And then like the next game week, he has four home runs in the week. And if he got four home runs in the same week that Freddie Freeman also got four home runs, you're like, oh, this lineup like just smashes. But like you have to make sure that it all happens at the same time. And, and that's sort of what applies to, to so rare with these lineups that you look and you're like, oh man, this is, if I had just played this lineup in game week 308, then like when Tadic scored and Vanakin scored, and whoever, whoever else, like the guys just happened to get through and you're like that, that was a really good week. And the problem, particularly when it comes to football is if, if that week happens to be their best situation of the season, it's not happening again. So when you look and somebody's like home against Sarang and everyone's like, Oh, that's, that's when I have to get them. But if it happened already, you're not getting that game again. And so you're looking at previous data that says, I should really just get Tadic or who, you know, whatever. And I get, you can theoretically make the thought like, oh, I should just always play whoever's home against Sarang, which obviously doesn't happen. Sarang has home games. But, but that's known. Like, that's not something we need to look back on. That's like, oh, you're playing the worst team in the league at home? Yeah, you should play them. And so that's, there's no, I mean, if you didn't know that, then yes, that's the lesson. But like looking back, so this is All-Star Limited from last week. Oh, I remember this, right. It was a Darmstadt, yeah, it's basically like a Bundesliga 2 stack. And it absolutely smashed. That's a wild score. Congratulations to Bellino 0511. But if you put that, I mean, I guess we should, let's just put this into the, into the concept builder. Mars, uh, and so it was all-star limited, right? This is more fun than me putting my own in. Marcel Shunin. So I don't know if this person used the concept builder or not because I mean this could just be the card that they had who knows and so it is Holland, Fabian Holland right yeah Medich and so you look at these you look at the scores and you think okay like that Jackson Irvine wow You look at the scores and you think these guys always play, always play well together, which may not be the case. So let's see. 
So you look back at, and, and actually like the previous game week was terrible. Like would not one have a reward in the previous three game weeks? Here's a tier two and then no reward, a tier three, tier two. And so, and that's, these are tier two and tier three back when the like tier three was the worst. And so theoretically you look at, if, if you had pulled this up and you're like, should I make this lineup? And because you have to ignore this 492 banger, because we didn't know that happened. You're looking at this and you're saying, yeah, no, this is not good enough. But something happened, obviously, where it was pretty good. Even nailed the captain. Man, what a score. And so, like, I, I look at this and I don't see what the lesson is. And, and maybe that's a me thing, which is fine. Plenty of reasons, plenty of times that I'm looking at something and I have no idea what the lesson is. But I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, I should just always play. I don't even know who these teams are. I should always play St. Pauli when they when they win five nothing, or Darmstadt when they win two nothing at home. And so I think it it gives you like an idea of different lineups can win, but we kind of know that already. And, and so I look at this and I think we, we know that certain lineups can win and people build stacks because like, Oh, they, when they have that one home game against the worst team in the league, provided they're not the worst team in the league, then I could win and I could smash. And let's just see, I don't even know what the reward was for this. Oh, wait, uh, I think it was in the thumbnail. So you build this Bundesliga two stack and it 516 is an absurd score. So where are we here? This is the it's still working. Here we go. So you want an Erling Hound, which is awesome. Like that's really cool. And so what what's what do we do? So I look at that and I said, okay, this lineup won. So what was next? The next was Verbruggen, CCV, Teddy Tuma, the GOAT, Joshua Kimmich, and uh, Berghaus. No correlation whatsoever. Somehow had the balls to captain Teddy Tuma over jo uh, Joshua Kimmich, which I just absolutely love. But what do we get? What do we? What are we learning? Because. I have one of these cards. I have a, a Verbruggen Limited. And I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure what we do with this, with this information every game week. And one of the other things that, that came up as, as part of this game week review conversation was one that I had talked about. I did a video of it a while ago. And it was all about whether you need super rares in rare pro and that actually came out from a different conversation of what's the best position for your flex and the answer is there is no best it's not the goalie because you can't use a goalie but the idea is like well i always use a midfielder in my i never use a forward in flex right and there are instances of every combination working like literally every combination. It's like, oh, I had used a rare forward and a super rare forward. And that won me all-star rare pro. Or I used a rare goalie or super, a super rare goalie, a super rare defender from the same team, another rare defender from that team, and then a, a midfielder and a forward from different teams and that one. And so like, that's how you do it. And there, there is just no, there is no, that's how you do it because every single game week is different. And that's why, like, we can look back and, I mean, I, I think looking back at my best cards is, like, it's, it's fun. Like, oh, what, yeah, what could we have won? But it's not helpful. Like, I, I'm, maybe if I, like, looked at my own lineups more, that becomes more helpful. But I'm just not sure anything comes out of it that is actionable. 
because I look at the lineups that like could have won basically like had I put these cards together and it's been weeks since I was like, oh, I could have built that lineup. And so shout out to Sora Highlands. So rare is like a box of chocolates. Never know what you're going to get. And yeah, Jump Shoot is, is completely right about this. That as soon as we figure out the time machine thing, we're good. I always wondered if somebody had a time machine. Like when you think of... Like if you surveyed a hundred people and you were like, you have a time machine, are you going to use it to go back or forward and see what people think? Because I think most of us would go back, but then you'd be like, oh, what if you could go forward? And they'd be like, oh, hmm. Shout out Michael J. Fox, by the way. So where we're going, we don't need roads. There you go. So Yowza, the, the answer is... Has it changed what lineup you build first? Oh, uh, no. No, it doesn't. And, and I'm not sure that really matters because maybe it should. Um, maybe it should. I don't know. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen anything. And maybe because I'm generally just taking my best cards. So it's like all all-star. And then we're like with the cap stuff, it gets a little more difficult. I am germ saying use trip and B's NBA podium lineup. These stars are unlikely to align in a week where no one else outside of his. Yeah. Like congrats, trip and B, trip and B, excuse me. And like it can hit, it can work. And so if something works once, I feel like there's too much, too much of a response in the side of like, see this works. And it's like, well, yes, if something, but like, if a one in a million works, that doesn't mean that we should copy it because it could be 999,999 more times until it hits again. And you have to figure out if the losses before that happens again matter, which is which that is definitely DFS tournament strategy of just making sure that whatever you're building, when it hits, it's got to hit big enough that it's worth it. Otherwise, you're just going to lose so long that you could run out of money before it hits. And then like, that's what I always would say about some like DFS players that they would just go on and on and on and on. And then they would win something. And it was like, well, that, that yes, your bad strategy worked. And they, now they think they're good because they won it. And everyone else in the DFS community is thrilled that they think they're good because they're, they're just going to bleed all the money back. But it's, it's like really important to know if it's good. Like, I think you could go through so rare lineups each week and explain why they're bad. But ones that hit, it's like, do you get lucky? And it's like, it's all really based. I mean, it's not all based on luck because you want to put your the better players that are in good situations together. But like to win a podium, you need luck on your side. You need the, that's the week that you need the guys to all have decisives together. I had a, a, a Lineup up last week, I think, that I was like, that's a pretty good lineup. And it didn't win anything because there were no decisives. But it's like, yeah. Like this, uh, I was talking with a Gator guy about this lineup that's up on the screen here. So three guys from River Plate. They got a clean sheet. I got all of the points from that. Captain Tadic, who got a decisive. And Hans Van Aken had like a terrible game. And I was like, I don't. Like I was seven points short of a reward. And I was like, I don't think this should win one. Like I didn't get it. I wasn't lucky enough here to get like a good lineup, but that's actually not the lineup that I wanted to talk about. It was uh, a rare lineup. Man, this one hurt. Joe Bendit giving up three at home. Oh no, they were away to Montreal. It was a rare lineup and I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty sure Bernard Desky was in it. So if I could just, here we go. Champion America Rare Pro. I was 63 points away from a reward, which like, fine. Gaeze conceded. That hurt Jansen, although he had a pretty good game. Like 58 from... So, so maybe it's more of a sore data problem because it's like, it's all greens. And I'm like, oh, greens should be good. I got a decisive, but it was like, it was really only one decisive. Bernardeski had two and a half points over the, you know, of AA. And so... Uh, 
is it a bad lineup? I don't know, but like it didn't have any decisives in it. Those and look, actually, you know what? Looking back, the clean sheet probably would have changed things, but Charlotte FC just too good. Shout out again to Trippin D. I didn't tell him I made that lineup before the game week because I thought he wouldn't talk to me. But like Bradley and Pomacall are not decisive guys. And so I probably should have known. I don't, I don't think I had anyone better, to be honest. So the I'm scrolling back in the comments here because there were a few very good ones. But anyway, so I, I think ultimately we just come up with the problem of every week is different. And you can look at the podiums in every single competition. And just be like, oh, how did this lineup get built? And it was like, oh, it was the five cards that they had. And you were like, oh, okay. Well, why did they buy them? And it's like, well, they bought them because this guy had a really good game in game week 306. This one had a really good game in 309. And they happened to be playing. And every lineup is different because every gallery is different. And so we just all have different priorities. And our best play, like you could play Kimmich and I could play Teddy Tuma. And this past game week, like Tuma wins. But what do I? I think the lesson is actually to get both. So let me get through some of these comments. Thank you everyone for, for your comments and your questions. I think it's, uh, it's fun to do stuff like that. So Steven said, would love to ask a strategy question if possible. Steven, it is possible. Looking to enter rare, should I go for single decent rare for kickoff or build a legend pro squad? My current squad is limited U23. So the... Biggest secret in so rare is that Legends Pro is one of the best tournaments they offer. And the reason that's the case, because it used to not be. And when they changed the rules, not the rules, but when they changed the rewards from only rewarding Legends to rewarding current players, including stars, everything turned. And... It's something that Sean probably doesn't want me to talk about because he prioritizes it. But if you can get a really good Legends Pro lineup, I would do it. I would not do it for Limited. The, the, the situation is very, very different for Limited. And so, you, and you have to get good Legends too. But it's basically like three elite Legends and you should have two elite outfield or two elite, yes, well, an elite goalie and an elite outfield player. Because other people, like the people who play Legends Pro and who prioritize it, really prioritize it. I mean, you see like Tadic and Messi, like you see legit cards in there. And so I should probably just uh, pull it up because you'll see that there are very, very good lineups. Legends Challenge Pro. Is this the one that has? Yeah. So like Alfred Gomez, again, shout out. Um Looking up with Laird, that's a uh, Sam Tai favorite. You got 110 from, I don't even know who this is. John Marco Ferrari, fun name. And then you've got um, Gullet, so PSV is like Veerman and Sangare. Laudrup is Kimmich and Cruyff is Tadic. And I've seen people play like Tadic in here and like there, but there's Tadic right there from Surface. Um, so there are different ways to play it. I'm not saying that there's like a singular way to play legends, but it's actually very expensive. So Steven, I, if you're going from limited under 23 and thinking like, let me go to legends, I actually think that's not what you should do because it's such a big jump because you're competing for, like the rewards are so good that you're competing against like really, really good cards. So I don't know what the rewards are for rare kickoff, but I know the super rare kickoff ones and the unique kickoff are really bad, but I do think that's at least the right direction and you don't have to do it all at once, but based on where the market is, like if, if you can, you can buy some pretty good rares right now for not that much money. And so even if you go, Oh, I should have just kept reading germ germ said, Rewards and kickoff rare aren't very good and high value limited lineups being entered. Legends Pro is rare and above with tier one available. Okay. 
So, so the only reason I, not that I disagree with it, but I think you do need really good rares also to enter that one. So it says rare kickoff needs 370 points plus for the bottom reward pool. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are a lot. Um, let me know. What did I, Quinny, you missed everything, everything. Anyway, let me sc scroll back here because I thought there was another one. Here we go. So Overbeck Gaming, thank you for coming. From my point of view with concepts, I don't look at the winning squads, but at the consistent ones. If I see that a squad can consistently get near rewards or reach rewards, all I need is a big bit of luck to get something. I think that's, that's fair. I do think that there's plenty of validity to that. It's just that, yeah, I think there's validity there. Don't look at like what has won or what it could have won. And if there are, I mean, basically you're just looking for five high all around scorers in, in the concepts. And if it's not somebody, if it's not going like so drastically like this, because you're guys are really decisive dependent. I mean, I don't think a lot of people realize just like how much the game is affected by decisive actions. And so like, if you get one, it is so big because obviously you get this huge point boost, but it's really difficult to win rewards without decisives. I mean, I just showed you that one. I had a lineup that had one decisive and I was 68 points away from, from a reward. And so getting guys who are consistent, consistently high, which is why like on the strategy show, we always talk about why high AA players are good because when they score, you're getting 75, 80 instead of 62. And so that's what, that's why the AA. So I, I do like that point over back. So let me uh, scroll through a little more. Going forward and getting a new strain of code. What? Oh, going back is guaranteed. Going forward isn't. This is our, back to the time machine question. Can we go back and forward? I, I don't know. I don't know. Where does string team stacks fall into the conversation? So. I think the I think the problem with concepts, not the problem, but I think what people what the problem that people have with with using it, or it's really their problem, <laughs> is they will look at a stack that normally does not do well. And if they just happen to have done well once, they're like, oh, it's done well once. So it could do well again. And it's back to that like home against Saran conversation. It's like if they've already had their best matchup. I don't know if you're going to get it again. And Ajax, Benfica, Zenit, they tend to have good matchups because they just dominate their leagues. And so, sure, I, I think those go right ahead and stack those guys. But I don't think you're get, ever getting to a point where you're looking at that lineup and you're wondering if it's good. Like, we know, we know it's good. And Jose is right. Always pick the right captain. Particularly in 270, because, my gosh, that... The 50% bonus is absurd. Yaz is saying maybe it would be interesting to look at the winning lineups gallery and see how they've built the gallery to play. So sure, you could do that. Absolutely. I'm just not sure. Like, do we do we look at that and then follow it? Oh, they or oh, they I mean, like this, what is this lineup? Sorry to like call out whoever won this. Bellino 0511. So a 1.1 ETH gallery, which I'm guessing includes, how, yeah, 0.2 for how. So this is exactly the kind of lineup that I love to see win. But I'm I'm also not sure I could go through this like, how did they come up with it? Well, it's like they they played their best, they played their best limiteds. And I'm no like football expert, but I don't know who these guys are. And so if I went and was like, oh, let me just buy these these guys, is that helping me? Because it see it feels like it was like I he, they just put their best lineup in All Star Limited and YOLO, which is great because it paid off. But 
let's see, they have, yeah, two lineups, All-Star Rare and All-Star Limited, and absolutely smashed All-Star Limited. So what are we learning here? What, what's the lesson on this one? Bastin saying Bendik is wank, which is true. Truth. I have him. I've had him for a long time, though, so. <clears throat> so I do think there's a higher possibility to smash with a full stack. What's your opinion? So I've been thinking about this a while because there are situations where it works. And the, the difficulty, not the difficulty, I think it was Gator guy who told me this, but I think it actually came from, uh, from his friend Storm, that you're basically looking at your lineups as a five-leg parlay. And in, if you, if you want to make it a four-leg parlay, you like combine your goalie and defender because you need the clean sheet. So if you get a clean sheet, usually they both do well. And so now you just need the other three to hit. And when you have five legs, and excuse me, when you have five players from the same team, you don't, the clean sheet, you could cut it down to three, like if you use the defender, or goalie and two defenders, and then you only need the clean sheet, presumably. The clean sheet gets you three good scores and you need five scores. So then you need something like what happened with St. Pauli here. You need, uh, was it St. Pauli? Yeah. Like they win five nothing and like everyone's having a good time. Like, you could have played f any one of these five and you're probably good in this matchup. I don't know anything about Sandhausen. I assume they're terrible. They were terrible on this day. We'll put it that way. And so that's where, that's where you go with that. So if, if you're in a situation, like you probably go in every week thinking like, yeah, Ajax can win three, nothing. And the, the scattered times where they're against Feyenoord or AZ Maybe you're like a little hesitant, but generally, yeah, I, like I think the f the full stack of those teams are fine. I don't think it's necessary. I rarely do it. In fact, River Plate's the only team that I had previously done it with, and I don't do it anymore because I don't have all the players anymore. Uh, Germ is saying, "Oh yeah, Pax did go off at 56 minutes." There are a lot of comments here that I'm still catching up on. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. That's really, yeah. Jose saying, I feel like three decisive actions and having the captain being one of them should be enough. I agree. I agree. But it, it but it, it needs to be three, three players with decisive actions as opposed to just three decisive actions. One player getting three decisive actions is not as good as three players getting one. Like I think that's really important to realize. Like you get the first decisive and you're at 60. And that next one is your player gets to 70. And the next one, your player gets to 80. So that's 80 points from one player. If you have three players each getting a decisive, 60, 60, 60, as opposed to 80. And then who knows what the other ones are? 70, 150. It's higher. So you want your decisive spread out. But this is better than the same folks always finishing in the top 10. So... Sure. I don't think the same people finishing in the top 10 is always better. Um, Germ says something about sending an email to support. So yes, please do that. Everything, any, any issues anyone has, support at soreardata.com is always the best place. Tagging soreardata on Twitter or me on Twitter or DM on Discord. It's not the worst thing, but it, it's prioritized if you email support at soradata.com. So please, please always do that. Isco says, buying a super rare goalkeeper to play kickoff until I manage to build a super rare team is a bad idea. I'm thinking of doing it. So I talked with Maxime during this week's office hours about super rare goalkeepers. They're the nut low of so rare. It's the worst. And... I think you're better off not, I, I, I think buying the goalkeeper is best done last, not first. Because if you start accumulating super rares, then you can start playing in rare pro. And you generally, 
is, and again, this is not, this is a, it, it works sometimes, but you generally don't want to use a super rare goalkeeper in rare pro. Like the upsides are usually just not high enough. And so that changed a little bit with the, when they adjusted the scoring matrix, but you generally, like you don't need to buy five super rares to use your super rares. This isn't NBA where you, you can't use rare. There's no pro division. Like you, you the, the pro division in football is made just for that. Three rares, two super rares, or four rares and one super rare. Oh, that was something I was going to talk about earlier. Well, I'll, I'll probably forget, but I'll go. Someone remind me to go back about how many super rares you need in, in all-star, in rare pro. But I, w- I would not buy the goalkeeper first. It is my only thing, Isco. And let's see. Somehow my comments got duplicated. So now I have no idea. I have no idea where I am. Not financial advice, not strategic advice. Maybe. Wait, here we go. Black's gallery building process. I, I can't go through that. It's not worth, that's not worth talking. So I may have gotten through all of the comments. The streaming software I use seems to have duplicated some. So I'm reading extra, I'm reading extra comments. So anyway, thank you to everyone who kept those going. Jumpshoot, do I drink coffee all day? I would love to. I would love to drink coffee all day, but I don't. And the reason I don't is because I refuse to make, I have like a big coffee maker. A guy I used to work with at Rotowire actually used to work at Green Mountain Coffee, which for our European listeners may not mean anything. I don't, maybe they're international, I don't know. But he was like a coffee guy. So I asked him what coffee maker I should buy. And so I bought this huge coffee maker. It takes up so so much room on my counter. It's absurd. But it makes like a, I don't even know how many cups of coffee it makes. But it makes a big pot and I drink until that's gone. And my wife drinks some. Sometimes she doesn't drink coffee before she leaves for work. And so I get more coffee. But I refuse to make a second pot or else I literally will just start shaking but I drink it until it's gone and then I happen to have it now. It's not even a caffeine thing. There's just something, well, it, it is a little bit of a caffeine thing because for some reason, if I sometimes make decaf, I just feel like I'm getting lied to. Like I'm trying to trick myself and my body knows. And it's not, I don't know. There's something about the coffee process, like the coffee drinking process that I just love. And so... Yeah, I drink it all the time. But I should be drinking more water. But I hate water. I actually like hate it. If I would do any, I would drink anything but water. Not, I mean, literally. But I'm one of the, like, yeah, decaf is the devil. Totally. Totally. It's like when somebody's like, oh, I'm making coffee. Would you like some? Like, oh, sure. Decaf. What? Is this even coffee? (sighs) Let's see. Back to the important stuff here on rabbit hunting. Speaking of rabbit hunting, I'm thinking of changing the name of this show because, like, honestly, I'm not sure this is, like, going through my card. In fact, we didn't even go through my cards, did we? 49 minutes here, 49 minutes in. Didn't go through my cards and I don't really want to see what I would have won. Actually, part of the reason why I I didn't do this is I didn't think the rewards were that great. Like the Howland Limited obviously is is really fun, but like the All-Star Rare, Vinici- that's a fun prize, Vinicius, but like Thibaut Courtois for Rare Pro. Like had I actually won All-Star Rare Pro and won Courtois, I would have been pissed. And somehow, boy, that's a horrible valuation difference. An all-star super rare. I, I'm not going to win that. But shout out to Gold Guy who finished second. That's a good one. Looks like we might be missing a reward there too. But anyway, 
Let's go back. Over back. After building a consistent all-star rare, what do you think is the smartest move to have as a second rare squad, challenger, champion, Europe, or all-star rare pro? So my strategy show partner, Sean Newsham, would definitely say all-star rare pro and to just start accumulating super rares and try to play there. And rewards-wise, I think that's the right move, despite me just saying that winning Courtois would have been terrible. And I think it's... But consistently, the the lineup, the, excuse me, the rewards in All-Star Rare Pro are better. There are more, they're just better. And so that's tend where I go. And so I think that's the right move. Challenger and champion, the answer is never champion Europe Rare. and Or Rare Pro even. Like it is so expensive to play those competitions. And the rewards are great, but they're also really hard to win. And you get sometimes where lineups that you're like, oh, that's not, that's a weird lineup, but it, but it won. And shout out to my boss here, Maxime, who finished second, I believe, in Champion Europe Rare with this lineup, which, I mean, this is not a cheap lineup by any means, but it's very expensive. He won uh, Vinicius, I believe. I'm pretty sure he won Vinicius. So, yeah, that's a tough one. Challenger is fun when Zenit do don't play or Ajax, unless you have those guys. But uh, yeah, I would tend to go rare pro. Frankly, like I don't think cap 240 is that bad. Like I, th I think it's fine to chase ETH in those and build up from there. But I, I, don't, I, never, I never think getting super rares is bad, to be honest. Like if you look at my own transactions... I'll buy a rare here and there, but I primor primarily, excuse me, focus on trying to get better super rares. Sometimes I just buy shit ones and hope for the best, but, or I buy one and it's, and it's, uh, they get hurt immediately. Hate water's pretty strong. Isco said water's the goat. You guys are nuts. Water sucks. It's good for making coffee. How about that? It's boring. Doesn't taste like anything. You'll never convince me that like water is great. It's healthy, I know, and I th that's why I drink it because it's good for me. But I don't. There's not. A, I've never had a sip of water and like really enjoyed it. I'm, I, I'm just dying of thirst at that point, and I'd rather just drink anything else. Any chance MLB lineup builders are on the horizon? Yes. We talked about it on office hours on, on Wednesday. We are working on that. And so, yeah, it should be there. Rare Pro is just tough to get into. I feel like my rares would just score better than 0.3 super rares like Lucho or Zella I'd rather have. So the, the response is, is you need both. Like Rare Pro is not, despite what, what Sean will try to tell you, and he'll find some like random lineup that did really well, but like rare pro is not easy to win. And because of the good rewards, there are really good lineups in there. And so yeah, you, you need that Zeller Ryan and you need a good super rare. And that's just the way it is. Like this winning one here last week, Tata rare, Kimmich rare, Kim Young Guan, who I don't know, is that Seol Young Wu? It is those two super rares, and then so a little Ulsan stack. Teddy Tuma here. So th th this is like the lineup. They're like, see, anyone can win it, or anyone can podium, and like, sure, it can happen, absolutely. But you need you need good cards in rare pro. It's as simple as that. Uh, Isco, there is not an MLB show yet. There's no MLB show yet. Part of it is that I'd like to see how the game, I'd like to see how the game is played by others first. So, Oisin says, I'm not sure buying a super rare goalkeeper is a bad idea. If you need a goalkeeper, upgrading from rare to super rare are 2x, but if you want to upgrade an outfield. So, okay, so this is it. I'm glad you brought this up. Because the, the 
price multiple on goalkeepers in terms of rare to super rare is definitely lower than outfield players. And I don't think, I don't think there's a, a tried rule. Like there are some people who are like, I'm not going to sell this super rare for less than five X the rare. And okay. Like they're that fine. Like those people can do that. If you have the super rare and other people want it, you can price it however you want. But the, the multiple on goalkeepers is definitely lower. And part of the reason for that is because goalkeepers are more expensive anyway. So you're going to see like the, like the situation comes up. I'm going to do, now, let me do MLS just because I'm thinking of it right now. But shit outfield players cost a lot less than shit goalkeepers. Like you, you still have to pay up for goalies. And so because not enough people want to use goalies, like super rare goalies have less utility, like less actual utility or that's not how I want to put it. Because most people don't use super rare goalies in rare pro, you can almost eliminate the rare pro region from the utility that comes with a super rare. So if you think of it that way, then you, you're only playing a super rare goalie in either the super rare level, including like all the cap modes, or in unique. And outfield players you can play in rare pro super rare and unique and so you tend to they just have more utility which is why people want them more so when you look at goalies like i said like really like not great outfield players can cost i apologize i still kind of think in eth but if it's like 0.05 0.02 and their super rare could be you know 0.15 or 0.2 like the goalkeeper is going to be 0.4 or 0.3 ETH. And the super rare will be 2X that or 2.5X, which is like the multiple is smaller, but it's but the actual amount of money you have to pay to get them is still high. And so that's why just saying like, get the goalie because it, the multiple is lower, but you're paying twice as much. And it's really just the like an entry fee. That's a, Quinny always said that about goalies, that like that's your entry fee to that division. And I think it is. But just like looking at this, you'll see, and and super rare is always a little tough, but like Ryan Gold, 0.36 to, yeah, 1.35. I, although, yeah, that one recently sold. There's some like last public sales. And that's the other thing, like just pricing super rares can be a little tough. But if you go to goalies, you'll just see that the multiple is much lower. And, but you'll also notice that like if you just scroll down, like Dane St. Clair with his 42 L5, 40 L15, and 43 L40 is still 0.34. And so like, yeah, his super error is 0.8. And so the multiple is lower, but like a 0.34 outfield player is going to cost two ETH or one and a half, whatever it is. And so yes, the multiple is lower, but you're still having to pay for all of that. So. So what will give more points, a two ETH team with a super rare goalkeeper or one super rare outfielder? I think it's the one, I think it's the one outfield player because the, the upside on an outfield player is just so much higher. Like you, you so rarely see goalkeepers with multiple decisives and like we do see peak scores. Like that was one of the biggest changes from the, from the scoring matrix change was that the, the peaks of goalkeepers went up. But they also, the, the, the floors also went down. Uh, or the the bottom, this the basement scores. I don't want to confuse price, floor price with, with scores. But I think, like, if, if you're going to spend 0.8 on a goalie, I would just spend that 0.8 on an outfield player that will give you a much more consistent player than, than a goalie. David's saying, can you put the score on the rewards page? Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah. As I say to a lot of things, definitely, maybe. And I'm out of coffee now, which means we have to stop. That you know, last sip was actually pretty cold. 
I'm just kidding. We don't have to stop, although it has, has been just about an hour. And yeah, so I, obviously I'm not looking at my lineups anymore. If anybody has any suggestions of what to call this show, now, because I am not looking at lineups, I'm not actually rabbit hunting anymore. I don't know what to call it. The reason I haven't changed it is because I haven't called it yet. Or I haven't, the reason I haven't changed the title is because I haven't come up with a better one yet. Every sip, it's just, ugh. anyway. If there are any questions, any more questions or topics, or if you give me a good one, I'll just chat my face off until it's over. But the, yeah, I was just saying MLB Showtime. Um, Quinny, you want super rares for rare pro that are captain material as a rare for rare pro. You want super rares for rare pro? Quinny, I have no idea what this means. So rare gallery and strategy coffee session. Maybe I should do a play on coffee. I like that. <laughs> you want, oh, okay. You want super rares for rare pro that are captain material as a rare. Okay. 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 Thank you, Jerry. So yeah. So because of the, so you, yeah, two super rares that are captain quality and an actual rare, re, right. Cause you can only captain a rare in super rare. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, Quinny for misunderstanding. So that is true. So yeah, because of the the multiplier. Actually, that I, I will get to that point. Nobody reminded me that I was supposed to go back to this, but I'll go back to it now. So I did a video a while back. Like it, I probably should. I'm not even going to update it because it doesn't actually need it. But the the topic was, and if you just go on, like look for the look for it on Sora Data's uh, YouTube, which you're already here. Please like and subscribe. The the thing that everybody focused on is like, do I need two super rares to compete? And Sean will say 100% yes. That if you're entering rare pro with five rares or four rares, you have no chance. And he's wrong. However, the, the difference is Sean doesn't think about reality. He thinks of of the, the optimal play every time. And when it comes to so rare, the optimal move every time is to spend more money. And so that's how he thinks of it. And he's not wrong. Like almost every problem that comes up with so rare with your gallery is solved if you spend more money. However, not all of us have endless money. And so you have to make this decision of, do I go with better rares? So one of the things that always drives him nuts, and it's, it's actually funny because it, it actually bothers him, is when he sees like a four rare lineup in Rare Pro that are like elite rares. And Maxime does this all the time. And in fact, I think he did it. Yeah, so like All-Star Rare Pro. Like Malcolm is elite. Kimmich is elite, elite, excuse me. Kim and Jay is elite. Barkus is a goalie. And, and he has this one Luis Araujo super rare. I sold my Luis Araujo rare recently, which is why he's on this absolute banger of a run. For anyone who has him, like you're welcome. So Sean's response to this lineup would be, you would have won more if you just had a Barkus super rare. Or if you had a Kim Min Jae super rare or a super rare of anyone, which is actually not true. But really what the focus needs to be on for rare pro, and, and it applies to all of them, but because rare pro allows for these multiple scarcities, is scoring more points than everyone else. And if you can do that based on your budget with rares, then go for it. And... 
is is your lineup going to be better if you if one of these rares was a super rare? Of course. But we don't not everybody has the endless resources. And so his response, <coughs> excuse me, would be sell Kimmick, buy a really, really good rare and a really good super rare, and you're set. But Kimmick's like expensive for a reason. Malcolm, like these guys score all the time, like they high scores all the time. And so there is a level though where you're thinking, is this rare so good that it's not worth just selling it for two super rares? And Sean will always say, yes, you should play two super rares. But ultimately, it's just a matter of how many points you're scoring. And, and at some point, yeah, if you get the super rare, then sure. I think a, a lot of, a, another thing that we tend to focus on are like, oh, he only had one super rare. And it's like, maybe they only have it. Like all of the lineups that we put out aren't necessarily like our final plan lineups. And so you don't have to wait until your whole gallery is set to enter. Sometimes you just throw in a lineup because you're thinking, if this hits, this is the lineup I'm trying to get. I would love to have a super rare in it at some point, but I don't right now. And so I'm just going to do it. And like, that's okay. We don't have to rush. They're, like you can be patient when it comes to so rare. I'm not patient, but I like to tell people to be that way because it's easier to say it than to do it. So there's that. Yeah, I was just saying in 352, America rare scores were much higher than America rare pro. It happens. It actually happens a lot. Like rare, I, I think people underestimate the scores needed to win in rare competitions because there's so many more people entering. And so you're more likely to get lineups that like really bang. So that is a, that is a, a benefit to rare pro. Like we used to do, I used to put out a, graphic every week and it would compare every game week and it would compare rare pro and rare scores and to podium rare is is usually harder meaning you need more points than podium podiuming rare pro and and so it's it's hard to think like i have like there are plenty of people who like make lineups to start a week and they're like this is a podium but a lot of times, if you have a four, five rare lineup and you're like, this could win, you should just put it in rare pro. None of us do it because we're like, yeah, I don't need super rares. But a lot of times the score, the top scores to win rare competitions are higher than rare pro. And they're high and they're higher in rare than they are in super rare. Minus the absurd XP boosts and all that stuff. Or scarcity boosts, good. but yeah, that's something to look at. And so, one of the one of like the weird outcomes that you notice when you look at how many people win rewards in rare pro with like just one super rare or no super rares is that there are not like they're just not, not that many. And you're like, well, then it's you can't do it. And the difference, or the thing that you have to consider, is that a lot of people just aren't there aren't that many one super rare or zero super rare lineups in rare pro. So like naturally. If there are 800 lineups with two super rares and 100 with one super rare and 100 with rare, you're just, the 800 are just more likely to get it. But if there was an equal number, I don't, think the, the, I don't think the two super rare lineups would necessarily dominate the rewards as much as they do right now. So that's kind of goes back to the concepts thing where you look back and you're like, oh man, all, all the lineups that won rewards had two super rares. And if you're like, well, if all of the lineups from, from the rare competition of whatever that was, so if all-star rare pro, all of the rewards were won by people with two super rares. If all of the lineups from all-star rare were in that contest too, it wouldn't be that way. And so we look at, well, you have, you need two super rares because 80% of rewards are won by super rares, by, by lineups with two super rares. And it just wouldn't be the case if, if all of them were together. And I'm not saying that they should do that, but the viability of one super rare or zero super rares in rare pro is, is higher than we give it credit for. I'm not telling anyone to do this. Like, let me scroll back. Where's that? I need Mike Baston's uh, not strategy advice, not strategic advice. I'm not telling you to put your best rare lineups in rare pro, but if you're someone who's willing to like try it, I think it's reasonable. I say that 
And I pretty much always use two super rares. So I don't know. Although based on my lineups, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't. Claremont, it is actually afternoon, well into the afternoon. Surely there's someone here in the morning, all of our uh, U.S. West Coast, West Coasters, which is, I think it includes Wedge Game, who started this whole conversation. Let's see. I just built two 2 teams in concept lineups. First off, thank you for using the tool. One with a super rare goalie based on L40, including a super rare bonus. It got 313. The other had an SR forward and got 310. I mean, sure. But like, <laughs> it's that's one game week. Who? I mean, that, yes. It, I'm not saying it can never work. I just think, don't think that's optimal. That's all. Do you ever see Sora bringing 11-man tournaments in the future? No, and I hope they never do it. I don't think people realize that 11 player lineups vastly make it easier for whales or people with better galleries. Like just think of your lineup head to head with someone and just be like, could my five cards beat them this week? And you're like, maybe. And they're like, could 11 of yours beat 11 of theirs? And the, it's like, you go from 40% to 2%. It's just not, it, no, 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 no. When does the afternoon end and evening begin? Five o'clock. Five o'clock is evening. Anything before that is afternoon or, you know, between noon and 4.59 is afternoon. Excellent question. Um, all right. Even though they implement with stack limitation. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like any, if they limit stacks, and honestly, stacks don't happen nearly as much as people think. And like the occasional times that stacks win, everyone's like, see, like they don't ban IAC stacks. Like it just doesn't happen that much. And so, let me see. So the so our stacks tool, you can actually look at like specific. Yeah, so an all star limited, which probably had like twenty thousand lineups in it. Like there were thirty two stacks of Yota and Cameron Carter Vickers, and so stacking is just not stacking is not as game dominating as as you think, except hopefully this game week for Argentinos. Oh, no, not this game week, next year, next week. As a Kevin McAllister guy, I'm with you, Clement. Do you ever see Sora bringing additional amateur competitions like stack draft, where instead of drafting individual players, we draft stacks? Um, I don't know. So stacking is a poor man's weapon against whales. I... <laughs> I'm not going to go into it now. Maybe I'll talk about that next week. But this is 100% right. And I think people look at stacks as, oh, all these whales with their Bayern stacks winning everything. And actually, that was one of the first shows that Sean and I did, on the like first strategy shows that we did, was how stacking, it, it, it's, it's, it, Stacking is a way, yeah, just this. This is perfect. Is the poor man's weapon against whales. Yep, you only see stacks when they hit. But again, like they they're not they're not as deep as people think. And so let's see, same team stacks. Yeah, like this one. Everyone's like, oh, ban Celtic stacks. There were 13. Not even Joe Hart. Like these are this. This is what we want to ban. Three people playing Otamendi, Jamario, and Gonzalo Ramos. However you say his name. It's just not. It's not a problem. Anyway, I'm gonna go because I've been here long enough. We didn't even go through my lineups. I am taking suggestions for a new name for this show. 
Do not email support at soradata.com with that. You can hit me directly with these. And so do that. But I had a ton of fun today. Thank you everyone for joining. The, the chat was hot and we got through a lot. Oh man, now I'm like freestyle rapping. Let me, let me stop that right now. <laughs> but yeah, next week we can, go in, uh, we can go into stacks. We can use the concept builder and show you why stacks are sometimes good or not. And so, um, yeah, we'll do that. So really appreciate you all being here. Good luck on this absolute <sighs> dreadful international break. Jump shoot is not happening. I, I had to shut that down because I can't do it. But thank you. Appreciate the, the encouragement. So yeah, thank you to everyone for coming. And uh, I will see you next week.